Australians have contacted me lamenting the devastation and chaos they know will revisit their lives with the intended removal of the cashless debit card. The card is an important part of a broader suite of solutions. It gives power and respite to the most vulnerable men, women and children and the elderly. Yes, those who need it most, and it is those people, not the drinkers and drug users, not the abusers, who will suffer the most from its withdrawal. Indeed, in response to what is a philosophical objection to the card, residents living in areas from Queensland, Central Australia, the Kimberley, Sojuna and surrounds, despite raising their concerns, are not being heard on this matter. Instead, the people are, who are being heard are those screaming human rights. But I say, whose rights are they defending? Maybe you need to live in a town devastated by alcohol, drugs and violence and seen it eroded from within. Not convinced yet? Keep walking in my shoes, having helped care for foster children. Yes, wards of the state, that may help you come to a different conclusion. I've looked after a child, hello Joe, now a man who has fetal alcohol syndrome, never able to live with his parents. Yes, he's had some big hurdles, but he's recently graduated with a certificate four and is still in work. I'm here to tell you his family and the families who raised him couldn't be more proud of him. And yet another child, again from a remote community, who lost his mother to alcohol fuelled dysfunction and now lives forever with the consequences of that. So rather than unleashing the rivers of alcohol and drugs and with it more associated abuse and neglect, how about ridding our communities with the miscreants, pretenders, controllers and rescuers. Leave them nowhere to hide or thrive. You know who they are, the ones that are there for the ride, for the cultural immersion, or where their apathy and paralysis prevails. Our regulators, our government officials, need to do their jobs better and reward those people working hard to work against the tide of culture of mediocrity and keeping only those people delivering outcomes who we know are there for the right reasons. More broadly, I want our country to think different, act different, demand different, push away from the pressure of sameness, the rejection of discourse, the perils of groupthink. Reject over-policing of language, cancel culture and aggressive social media commentary. All that does is conjure ridicule, creates fears and stifles our potential to do better. I want this country to stop doing what doesn't or won't work, have higher expectations, be tolerant of mistakes, missteps, and admit when we get it wrong and celebrate when we get it right. I get angry when others seek to define me firstly or only by race, and I know from experience it is getting worse. I was not an Indigenous news reporter, nor an Indigenous businesswoman, or an Indigenous company board director. I had the same qualifications and experience as everybody else. First and foremost, I am just me. I look forward to objecting loudly to navel-gazing, paternalism, box-ticking, quasi-consultation, silly reporting that returns little value and ideas that fail to provide evidence of change. I am inspired by, the, by words in 1942 by Liberal Sir Robert Menzies pushing back on government that seeks to control and limit freedom, one which seeks to nurse us, rear us, control us, maintain us, pension us and bury us. In short, give me the tools and information I need to make decisions and to prepare for my own future and help me only when I truly need it. In opposition, I'll relish working with colleagues to hold this government to account for its promises, legislation and policy in this chamber, in committees and in the public domain. I can't change yesterday, but today I might just help change tomorrow, and that's why I will stand what I will stand for in this place. Thank you.